very good evening from stories around the world to stories here at home this is the national news broadcast i'm vidushni sadish kumar a very good evening indeed i'm charita vinaparachi and i'll move on to the headlines for tonight's news india provides 500 million us dollars to sri lanka to purchase petroleum oil the gama samaga pili sandara and one lakh program through the budget will commence tomorrow The president instructs officials to look into locations where new wind power stations could be set up. An unbiased investigation into the incident of assaulting a group of Ragabal Medical Faculty students. Not a single patient killed by the COVID disease in the Colombo Municipal Council limit since the 1st of January had received the booster dose of vaccine. The world oil prices on the rise continuously for 5 weeks. to those and other stories in detail now and starting off with local stories the sri lankan government has received a 500 million us dollar short term loan under the indian export import bank assistance for the purchase of petroleum oil signing of the relevant agreement has taken place at the ministry of finance today It was signed in the presence of Minister of Finance Basil Rajapaksha and Indian High Commissioner in Sri Lanka Gopal Bagle, Secretary to the Ministry of Finance S R Artigala and General Manager of the Indian Exim Bank Govara Bandari have signed the pact on behalf of the Sri Lankan government and the government of India respectively. The Indian government is considered as a main partner in developing of Sri Lanka. The first credit facility to Sri Lanka had been provided by India in the year 1973 through extending of a loan amounting to 46.35 million Indian rupees. Presently, Indian loan and aid are being provided for economic development of livelihood, education and health services. Minister Basil Rajapaksha has engaged in a tour in India last year as a measure for the continuous maintenance of Indo-Sri Lanka bilateral relations. The minister was engaged in talks with Indian officials pertaining to the power conservation sector. As a result, it has been decided to extend a 500 million US dollar short-term loan for the procurement of petroleum products. The Gama Samaga Pilisandarak Ayavayan Veda Lakshak program will commence throughout the island tomorrow. Minister of Finance Basil Rajapaksa said at a media briefing in Colombo today. that a sum of 100 billion rupees has been allocated for the development programs to be implemented within the year minister of finance basil rajpaksa said that the meaning of the program is the commencement of development work chosen by the people themselves the government is only providing the funds therefore it is fully a people oriented program proposed by the people it is a joint collaboration of rural officers state officers community leaders and the sacred place of worship such as the temple church and the kovil in addition other people representatives also take part the minister also said that their aim is to engage in work based on financial estimates he added that the cooperation of the media is also anticipated on the successful implementation of the program for the first time in the history fund allocated on the national level to the ministries and the state ministries are being distributed upon the 25 districts accordingly the district secretary become the authority the nation building programs have been decentralized on the village level the minister also said that 85000 million rupees have been directly allocated through the budget on the gamasamaga pilisandra project in addition village women will be engaged in the home shop program accordingly 15000 million rupees have been set aside for 14000 recipients the total disbursements amount to 100 billion rupees each project has a minimum investment of 1 billion rupees the public utility commission says that any type of power cuts back will not take place today chairman of the commission john kratnayak requests the general public to refrain from unnecessary utilization of the electricity under the present situation Chairman of the Commission Janak Ratnayak said that the Electricity Board has not made any request and information of any power cuts for today. A discussion in this connection was connected with the Minister of Power Udaya Gamban Pillar. He added that minister has agreed to provide the necessary fuel stocks to be needed for the next week. There is a fuel reserve until next week. He has ruled out any shortage of oil. The chairman has also called upon the consumers to extend necessary support by switching off air conditioners between 6 pm to 9 pm. 
He has also requested businessmen to switch off their lightning of main boards. Such measures would enable the country to conserve electricity. He also said that the Norachole power station is fully activated at present, enabling to add 300 megawatts and 270 megawatts of power to the national grid. And meanwhile, President Gautabe Rajapaksha inspected the Ceylon Electricity Board on Thambapavani Wind Power Station in Mana today. The Thambapavani Wind Power Farm project commenced in 2014 with the aim of empowering the country with electricity, providing a stable power supply and accelerating the development process. The power plant is located a 150 hectare land, 13 kilometers off the coast of Mena, which faces both Mena monsoon winds. The power plant has 30 towers with a turbine height of 90 meters. The diameter of the rotating blades is 126 meters and the wind turbines generate 3.45 megawatts of electricity. The project includes a 36 kilometer transmission system to Nadukuda, Green Substation and Pudukaman in Mana. The total power capacity is 103.5 megawatts. The Ceylon Electricity Board says that the cost of generating a unit of electricity from the system is less than 8 rupees. The eco-friendly, state-of-the-art wind farm with a number of specialized technologies for optimal power supply is considered a milestone in the journey towards renewable power generation. Plans have been made to add another 50 megawatts to the national grid from the Thambapawani wind power plant. President Rajapaksha inquired about the progress of this and instructed the officials to prepare a report immediately on the locations where new wind farms could be built. At present, 240 48 megawatts are added to the national grid by wind power plants. The purpose of the visit was to explore the possibility of increasing it in a short-term period and the President inspected all the operations of the power plant. The government aims to obtain 70% of the country's total electricity generation from renewable energy sources by 2030. It also aims to reduce electricity bills in the future by promoting low-cost electricity generation without harming the environment. Minister of Power Garmani Lokoge, State Minister Dominda Disanayaka and Principal Advisor to the President Lalit Viratunga were also present on this occasion. And meanwhile, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha says that the cooperation of professional intellectuals is needed for the supervision of development processes of the country. He also said that the government continuously anticipates the assistance of these intellectuals in the development of the country. The Prime Minister had made these remarks at a meeting with the new office bearers of the Organization of Professional Association of Sri Lanka at the Temple Freeze today. Introduction of new of officials of the OPA to Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha on these occasions. President of the Association Dolith Pereira said that 52 organizations representing 32 professionals have banned with the association. They include physicians, engaged engineers, attorneys at law and the accountants. He added that the professionals are ready to voluntarily extend their services to the government program by joining themselves with the relevant ministries. The Prime Minister has requested the professional body to act on behalf of the development of the economy of the country through liaising with the respective ministers and ministries. He has also appreciated the cooperation being extended by the professionals for the development of the country. The Prime Minister added that the assistance to be extended to the Organization of Professional Association for the future progress of the country will be provided. Prime Minister's Additional Secretary, Attorney at Law, Chamindu Kularatna, and Director General of International Affairs to the Prime Minister, Anuradha Herat, have also attended the meeting. Minister Sarat Virasekara has ordered the Inspector General of Police to conduct a systematic and full investigation into the incident of assaulting a group of students at the Students' Hostel of the Faculty of Medicine in Ragama by a group of outsiders. He has also informed to take maximum legal measures against the culprits disregarding their rank and file. The attack was launched at dawn today. Three students injured in the incident were admitted for treatment at the Ragama Teaching Hospital. The police says that a group comprising of 15 persons had launched the attack. Minister Sarat Virasekra said that two special police teams have already been deployed. The aim is to apprehend all suspects. The medical faculty students have caught a motor vehicle belonging to a government institution and its driver and handed them to the police. The minister further said that he has ordered the IGP to implement the law against the culprits disregarding ranks. 
Senior DIG Ajit Rohan has said that six suspects have been taken into custody with regard to the incident. The clash was reported to have been the outcome of a confrontation between two groups of students. Some people had entered the premises in two vehicles prior to the attack. Senior DIG Ajit Rohan has said that senior uh, rather said that six suspects have been taken into custody with regard to the incident. The clash was reported to have been the outcome of a confrontation between two groups of students. State Minister Arundhika Fernando has also expressed opinion regarding the incident. State Minister Arundhika Fernando said that if it has been found out that some incidents had taken place due to the bringing up a vehicle by some group, he would definitely intervene to conduct an investigation in the proper manner. He also said that if it was proven that the incident had taken place through his involvement, he will definitely resign from his post. Meanwhile, steps have also been taken to conduct an investigation regarding the bringing of a vehicle belonging to the Coconut Development Authority to the location where the clash has taken place. Chairman of the Coconut Development Authority, Keithi Veerasinghe, Veera said that the duties of the driver of the vehicle have been suspended. Chairman of the Coconut Development Authority, Keithi Veerasinghe, said that the driver has taken away the vehicle without receiving permission and the vehicle has been handed over to the Ragama Police Station. He also said that the duties of the driver has been suspended and a disciplinary inquiry is being conducted against him. Health Division say a progress is witnessed in the number of booster vaccine inoculations by now in comparison to the situation prevailed recently. More than 91,000 persons have received the booster vaccine yesterday along. Deputy Director of Health Services Specialist Physician Dr. Hemant Herak said that accordingly more than 37% of the target population have now been vaccinated. He also said that an increase in the number of patients has also been reported. We know that the number of daily reported cases gradually increasing in Sri Lanka. Yesterday or day before yesterday, it passed the 1,000 mark and the number of cases appear to be increasing and this trend could go on for a few more days. And we expected this type of increase even prior or during the festive time. And this has been the trend in many parts of the world, in many countries. They have already experienced increasing trend in daily reported cases, including many so-called developed countries. And at present, increased number is not amounting to any type of crisis situation in the health system. The current health system in Sri Lanka is capable of handling much more cases than we have done it earlier also. However, the notion that the hospital capacity is saturated is basically created because we know that we did not have any facility exclusively for the treatment of COVID treatment prior to this pandemic. And almost all facilities developed in these hospitals are created as a result of this pandemic and these facilities except for few places almost taken over from other facilities intended for the treatment of other diseases and to provide other services. Therefore when the, the number of cases are increasing hospitals gradually acquired other facilities for the treatment of COVID-19 patients and that definitely affected the services rendered by these hospitals for other services and when the cases are going down usually they reverted back those space or other facilities given for the COVID-19 patients back to the intended services. So therefore, at a given time, we always had a almost 75% saturated level of occupancy in hospitals. And when there is an increased number of cases, definitely the, the saturation level will go up. But that does not mean that the old facilities are exhausted in these hospitals. We are capable of increasing the facilities in almost in all hospitals and also we will be creating additional facilities depending on the requirement in other hospitals where currently the COVID-19 patients are not actively treated and we are capable of handling even daily reporting of over 5,000 cases. We have done it. However, we do not want to have that kind of situation in future. We want to make sure that our numbers are curtailed and we want to make sure that we are not going to experience any type of massive outbreak in the coming days for which I think other than the health system is working hard to achieve that but the support from the citizens of this country is very important and for that we always request that everyone who has not taken the third dose of vaccine or the appropriate dose of vaccine please get their appropriate vaccine without any delay and also adhere to the health guidelines as much as possible. 
Mobile vaccination programs through sponsorship of the Sri Lanka Army are being implemented, centering on every district for the administering of the booster vaccine for citizens above the age of 20 years. A special program organized by the Sri Lanka Army has been conducted for the provision of the booster vaccine since the morning at the Dieta Uyana premises in Colombo. The first dose of the Pfizer vaccine is being continuously delivered on school children between the ages of 12 and 15 years, and the second dose of the same vaccine to youth between the ages of 16 and 19 years in schools throughout the island. Under the COVID immunization program, so far 36,018,224 doses of vaccine have been inoculated on the people in Sri Lanka. The first dose have been delivered on 16,710,257 persons. The number of persons who have received both the doses is 13,943,179. The booster vaccine has already been administered on 5.3 million people, 64,788 rather persons. The Director General of Health Services has confirmed 19 COVID-19 related deaths which has occurred yesterday. 17 of the fatalities were 16 years of age and above. The remaining two victims were between the ages of 30 and 59 years. We'll now want a Corona World update. United States pharmaceutical company Pfizer has asked the United States Food and Drug Administration to authorize extra low doses of its COVID-19 vaccine for children under age 5, potentially opening the way for the very youngest Americans to start receiving shots as early as March. The United States Food and Drug Administration had urged Pfizer and its partner BioNTech to research on a vaccine at the very earliest for children as the Omicron wave sent record numbers of youngsters to hospital care. The Food and Drug Administration agrees that Pfizer jobs containing one-tenth of the dose given to adults could be dispensed to children as young as six months. The decision could come within the month. The United States Center for Disease Control and Prevention also has to sign off to regulate the vaccine jobs. The United States recorded the world's highest number of COVID-19-related infections and deaths yesterday amounting to 264,693 cases and 2,780 deaths. The daily COVID-19 positivity rate has dropped to around 11% in India. The Indian health authorities say that the reason for the drop of COVID-19 cases and related deaths is due to the successful vaccination campaign conducted throughout the country. India recorded 161,386 COVID-19 cases and 1,728 deaths. The Russian capital Moscow has started offering a domestically developed coronavirus vaccine to children in the age groups of 12 and 17. Moving on to more local stories, new nine envoys comprising seven ambassadors and two high commissioners presented credentials to President Gotabe Rajapaksha at the President's house yesterday. Mr. Fred Rieswein has been appointed as the new ambassador of Denmark. New ambassador of Estonia is Ms. Katrin Kiwi. Retired Major General Umar Farooq Burki presented his credentials to the President as High Commissioner of Pakistan. Gambian High Commissioner is Mr. Mustafa Jawara. Mr. Nalan Zagazbayev has been appointed as the new ambassador of Kazakhstan. Now, the ambassador designate of the Republic of the Mr. Alain de Deniga, Austria is Mr. Alain Deniga is the new ambassador of the Philippines. Of ambassador of Australia is Mr. Catherine Vizier. Now, the ambassador designate of the Republic of Austria will present the 
Mr. Goodney Bregerson has been appointed as the ambassador of Iceland. While Mr. Nora Gilson is the new ambassador of Israel, Foreign Minister Professor G.L. Peris, Secretary to the President Gamini Senorat and Foreign Secretary Admiral Professor Janath Kolombage were also present at the credentials presentation. The newly constructed three-storied Pradesh Sabha building in Kurunagala was declared open today. Ministers Basil Rajapaksha and Johnston Fernando have presided over the event. A foundation stone was laid for the construction of the building in the latter half of 2019. The building was constructed within two years at a cost of 250 million rupees. It was built under the program to strengthen local government institutions according to the government's vision of prosperity policy statement. The sheriff's office, the public health office, a registry, storage, cafeteria and a physical fitness center are located in the ground floor of the building. Minister Janak Bandara Tennakon, Governor of the Northwestern Province, former Commander-in-Chief of the Sri Lanka Navy, Admiral Vasanth Karanagoda and other government officials were present on this occasion. Minister Basil Rajapaksha said that politics should be restricted to the election time. Politics should never be used in the nation-building task. He also said that upon completion of 70 years after receiving independence, even the Minister of Finance who was paying back the loans is being criticised. The Minister is being criticised for the repayment of debt. Minister Basil Rajapaksha also said that they have paid back all loans due to the repay this year. He has requested the opposition to criticism only if he had have failed to honour the loan payments. He further said that they are striving to create a debt-free state under the leadership of President Gotabe Rajapaksha. And meanwhile, the University of Aesthetic Arts has inaugurated a new television channel by the name of Vapa Today. The chief guest at this commencement ceremony were Minister of Mass Media, Dallas Salaha Peruma, and Minister of Education, Dinesh Gunawardena. The new channel is a significant milestone in the history of the local universities. This was the first occasion of Sri Lanka University inaugurating a television channel. The main objective of the WAPA television channel is to impart educational knowledge and artistic value to the viewers. The channel is being handled by university lecturers, present and past students. A group including the ministers took part in the initial discussion at the studio of the WAPA channel. Minister of Mass Media Dallas Salaha Peruma said that he takes the opportunity to congratulate the entire staff of the University of Aesthetic Studies, including its Vice Chancellor, for becoming the fortunate to begin the first television channel among the 17 state universities in the island. He said that he recalled the assistance provided by the Education Ministry, headed by the Minister Dinesh Gunamardana and the President, to create the economic background for the implementation of this project. He also said that the developed countries with advanced economies is not known for for universities to have television channels. Therefore, the University of Aesthetic Affairs could become proudly humble for the achievement. Chairman of the Sri Lanka Rupahani Corporation, Sonal Gunavardhana, has also participated in the interview. Others who have attended the event included Vice Chancellor of the University of Aesthetic Studies, Professor Rohana P. Mahali Narachi, University lecturers, and students. And meanwhile, all arrangements have been made to conduct the 74th National Independence Day in a grand scale. Rehearsals regarding the celebration was conducted at the Independence Square premises in Colombo today as well. 3,463 personnel of the Sri Lanka Army, 919 personnel of the Sri Lanka Navy and 804 personnel of the Sri Lanka Air Force will participate in the parade of the National Independence Day on the 4th of this month. In addition, 336 police officers, 282 members of the Police Special Task Force, 437 members of the Civil Defence Department as well as 259 National Cadet Force personnel will take part in the event. Accordingly, the parade will become colourful with the participation of a total number number of 6,500 security forces personnel.
A 25 gun salute will also be accorded on behalf of the nation from the ship Gajbahu of the Sri Lanka Navy. The Sri Lanka Air Force is ready to display its pride at the National Independence Day ceremony through aerial demonstrations with the participation of 50 air pilots and 26 aircraft. and meanwhile the state ministry of home affairs informs that all places engaging in slaughtering of animals for meat and all meat selling outlets will be kept closed on the day of the national independence on the fourth of this month the state ministry also requests to close down all travels and all licensed liquor sales sales centers throughout the island on this day the Ministry of Education informs that a wax, rather vacation is granted for all grades in government and government-approved private schools. Its effect from 7th of this month. It further says that all schools will be reopened on the 7th of next month. The school vacation is being given to facilitate the conducting of the GCE Advanced Level Examination. And meanwhile, His Eminence uh, Seventh the Ling Rin Ponche met with the Chief Prelate of Asgire Chapter, Most Venerable Varaka Sri Nyana Ratanathero, yesterday. The meeting was held as a part of His Eminence Ling Rin Ponche's visit to the country. Tibetan Buddhist monk Ling Rinpoche, identified as the reincarnation of the teacher of Dalai Lama, arrived in the island on January 26th for an official visit. Prior to his visit to Kandy, His Eminence Ling Rinpoche met with his chief prelates, deputy chief prelates and many other spiritual leaders of Mahasangha in the country. He is venerated as respected by the international Buddhist community for being the reincarnation of the previous Ling Rinpoche. Furthermore, he is the leader of many Buddhist monasteries in India and some other Buddhist countries. This visit symbolizes and strengthens the long-term relationship between Tibetan Buddhists and Sri Lankan Buddhists. He received the blessings from the Sradhana Dharma Ligava yesterday. Ling Rinpoche has visited the Asguriya Mahapriravada Monastery to participate in a Pali chanting ceremony to invoke blessings for the long life of His Holiness, Dalai Lama and for the welfare of the Sri Lankan people. And with that, we conclude tonight's news. This is tomorrow at the very same time. Stay safe. Good night. Good night.